Let's consider a hypothetical scenario to help explain data federation using Starburst Galaxy. Let's say you work at a company, Company Y. Although Company Y is fictitious, you might see many parallels with the organization you work for or other organizations that you've worked for in the past. Company Y has always used a data warehouse. At first, this was an on-prem data warehouse involving their own hardware and a dedicated server room in a location that they rented themselves. This was okay as long as there were no alternatives, but it had major downsides. Running servers at scale is logistically and financially difficult. Decisions had to be made far, far in advance, and hardware had to be procured before it was needed, not afterwards. This could be managed, but it required a lot of hardware and a lot of people. This drove up costs, and as much as the insights from the data were useful, attaching a high cost to those insights made the leaders of Corporation Y think twice. Then came the cloud. Well, the cloud data warehouse, anyway. The cloud did fix some of the problems of running an on-prem data warehouse. Cloud providers were able to run operations at significant economies of scale. This helped drive down the cost of getting started, and once started, warehouses could scale without any effort at all. Additional cloud resources could be purchased as needed, and the warehouse became bigger and bigger. But an old problem began to creep in. Cost. Cloud data warehouses were less expensive than on-prem warehouses, but they still had significant costs associated with them. For instance, all data had to be transformed into a single structure, a single source of truth, before it could be used. This concept, schema on right, made sense for early data, but as Corporation Y scales, they found that they wanted to include all kinds of data, much of it unstructured. It's not that the cloud data warehouse couldn't work, but as the years marched on, the cost of data insights was only going up and up and up. Then came the modern data lake and Starburst Galaxy. Company Y was able to connect Galaxy to their cloud data warehouse without issue. They were even able to add a legacy on-prem data warehouse that had to be run on-site for compliance reasons. That's data federation already, and they weren't done there. They implemented an open data lake using Iceberg, an open table format that allowed schema rollback, time travel, and role level updates. Although they dabbled in data lakes before, this was a whole new level. Many of the Iceberg features replaced what they were already looking for in a data warehouse. At the same time, the data lake was much, much less expensive than the data warehouse for storage. Costly transformations were only conducted when needed, shifting to a schema on read approach. This saved money on data engineering. By the end of the first year, Company Y had shifted the majority of their workload to the modern data lake. They were saving more money than ever and were still able to federate the remaining data in the cloud data warehouse and the on-prem data warehouse using a single SQL statement in Starburst Galaxy. To them, this makes it seem as if all of the data is in one location, even though most of it is now saving money in the data lake. This has worked so well that they're even considering closing down the cloud data warehouse to save further money and expanding the scope of their data lake to help drive new insights. If this story sounds familiar, it's because it's being replicated in many organizations today. Data warehouses are giving way to modern data lakes, particularly those powered by Iceberg. Federation makes the change management aspect of this process seamless and lets organizations shift as much or as little data from the warehouse to the lake as they want over time. Excited to try this out for yourself? Later in this course, you can experiment with data federation and data lake federation. You'll see how you can connect different data sources in minutes while helping to save your organization resources and help push for more insights. That's enough of a change to be the real data revolution and represents the real modern data stack.